Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates and vice versa. So imagine we have a point P, uh, which is in the plane. And if we know it's, if we know it's Cartesian coordinates, X comma Y, what that means for us is the following. We know that the distance that the point lives above the X axis, that distance is Y. And we know that the distance it lives to the right of the Y axis is X. And this will form a right angle right here. Uh, and so that's exactly what, what Cartesian coordinates mean. Now, on the other hand, polar coordinates want to measure the distance from the origin to this point. We call that R. And then the angle formed between this red line with the x-axis, uh, that angle we call theta. And so these four coordinates, x, y, r, and theta, satisfy some trigonometric relationships to each other. And so basically, you get the so Katoa relationships. You're going to get that x over r equals cosine of theta. Uh, if you clear the denominators, you get the following equation right here. Uh, that's the ka from Sokotoa. If you take y over r, this is equal sine theta. You get opposite over hypotenuse. Clear the denominators, you get this equation right here. And if we just pause there for a moment, this actually gives us a way of converting from polar coordinates, so you know r and theta, we can convert those over into Cartesian coordinates, x and y, in the following way. This equation, the right-hand side only depends on r and theta, so you can compute an x and you can compute a y. Again, okay, this, this is just trigonometry here. And so consider, for example, the polar coordinate 2 comma pi thirds. This is polar. We want it to be Cartesian. What this tells us is we know r, which is 2. We know theta, which is pi thirds. And we want to find x and y. So x will equal r cosine r cosine theta, which means it's equal to 2 times cosine of pi thirds. Pi thirds is equal to 1 half. And so you get 2 times 1 half, the x coordinates of 1. To find y, you're going to use r sine theta, which this would be 2 times sine of pi thirds. Sine of pi thirds is root 3 over 2. The 2's cancel, and you get the square root of 3. And so then the, the Cartesian coordinate associated to the polar coordinate 2 comma pi thirds will be 1 comma the square root of 3. And that's all one has to do to switch from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Uh, coming back here, to go, from, to go from Cartesian coordinates x comma y into polar coordinates r comma theta, you're going to use the remaining statements about this right triangle that we were talking about over here. So for example, we've done so ka, we need the toa, uh, we get that y over x is equal to tangent theta. Using this equation right here, notice if we know x and y over here, then we can compute theta by taking arc tangent if necessary, right? Um, I do prefer this equation right here, tangent theta equals y over x, because there are actually infinitely many solutions to this equation, tangent theta equals y over x. Uh, this will involve coterminal and supplementary angles, and that's because there is more than one way one more than one angle to represent a polar coordinate. This equation has that multiplicity built into it. But you can certainly just accept arc tangent of y over x and go with what your calculator tells you. And then to find out r, we use the Pythagorean equation. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That is the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. We get the Pythagorean equation right here. Um, you could take the square root of both sides r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, but really, there's a plus or minus that's associated to that. And that's, again, from the fact that r could be positive, it could be negative. For the most part, we'll just take the positive one. And so if we have the Cartesian coordinate 1 comma negative 1, and we want it to be polar, what this tells us is that x equals 1, y equals negative 1. So r squared will equal the will, will equal 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. That is 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So we'd say r equals the square root of 2. Uh, tangent of theta equals negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. And so then arc tangent theta will equal arc tangent uh, of negative 1, which equals negative pi force. So we could describe this polar coordinate as square root of 2 comma negative pi force. If you want a positive angle, you could just add 2 pi there in which case you'll get root 2 comma 7 pi over 4. And that gives you a polar representation of that Cartesian coordinate. There are other ways of representing it, but we don't need every representation. We just need one to describe this polar coordinate.